Looming 110 feet above the Potomac River, 35 miles northwest of Washington, is Balls Bluff, today one of the NVRPA's most picturesque and peaceful sites. But on October 21st, 1861, in the opening months of the Civil War, a violent clash between Union and Confederate forces erupted here, shattering the morning calm and lasting until midnight. The day began as a routine Union reconnaissance, but the fog of war and faulty intelligence forced untested soldiers into action. What happened here was an early war skirmish that was really just an accident. Some Union troops came across in small skiffs. Reconnaissance patrol, typical, come out and see what's going on, happens on the night of October 20th, 1861. These inexperienced early war soldiers see a row of trees in the distance. It's nighttime, moonlight shadows. They think that row of trees is a collection of Confederate tents. They think of it as a camp. Without checking it out, they go back and report to their commanding officer that they have found a Confederate camp that looks to be unguarded. Union General Charles Stone on the Maryland side of the Potomac organized a raiding party to attack the Confederate camp. He sent 300 men across the swollen Potomac. When the raiding party discovered there was nothing to raid, it again sent word back to General Stone. They send over some reinforcements to turn the raiding party into a larger reconnaissance. While all of that is going on, some Confederate pickets in the area bump into the Federals who are out there and they begin fighting. Each side comes to understand that something is going on at Ball's Bluff and each side begins to send more troops over and the whole thing evolves into an unintended, unplanned battle. Lasts all day. The men fighting that day for the North and the South were citizen soldiers, soft from their civilian lives. Here, you had a situation in which uh, everyone was inexperienced. None of the federal troops had ever been under fire before. Some of the Confederates had participated peripherally at First Manassas three months before. But by and large, we're talking two inexperienced groups of men. Uh, they did the best they could. It was a hard fight, small in numbers, about 1,700 on each side. But it was, for that, uh, for that time period, something that was pretty drastic for all of these guys. They had never done anything like this before. The Federals had the Confederates outgunned with their modern rifles and artillery. But handicapped by inexperience, they could not seize the advantage. Most of the Federals here had rifled muskets. Um, most of the Confederates had older smooth bores, but given the ranges at which this battle was fought, it really didn't make any difference. We have three cannon on the field, all of which were brought over by the Federals. All ended up being captured by the Confederates at the end of the day. Behind me is the, the main portion of the battlefield, a couple of companies of a unit known as the 1st California tangled with a portion of the 8th Virginia at the top of the slope. Both sides soon fell back, but not for long. The Confederates rallied and pushed their advance with the 18th Mississippi in the lead. And you can imagine two lines of troops marching down, coming right across the field, getting slammed by Federal line. The 8th Virginia launched an attack late in the day, capturing two Federal cannon before falling back again and then the final climactic action of the day involved the fresh troops of the 17th Mississippi came and ultimately broke the federal line. That resulted in a rout. The Federals fell back down the southern end of the bluff down some very steep terrain. They did not, as you will sometimes read, jump off the bluff. The Federals may have had superior weapons, but the Southerners knew the lay of the land. It was the Confederates' use of the terrain that won them the day. This area was open, so a lot of the federal casualties were caused by the fact that these men were simply out in the open and had no cover. Federals eventually suffered some 223 killed, about 226 wounded, some 553 prisoners. The Confederates suffered 36 killed, about 264 wounded, and three prisoners. One of the interesting things about the battle is the death of the Union commander, Colonel Edward Baker, who was a United States Senator and the best friend of President Lincoln. He is the only U.S. Senator ever to die in battle. 
Wall's Bluff is primarily interesting because it was unplanned. You see a lot of the amateurishness and disorganized aspects of the fighting that you would get early in the war, things that you wouldn't have seen later. While this battle had little military importance, the political aftermath had a major impact. In the wake of the stinging defeat at Ball's Bluff, the Republican Congress, looking for a scapegoat, created the Joint Committee on the Conduct of the War, relieved General Stone of his command, ordered him locked up for six months, and then began plotting against those generals it regarded as less than aggressive. The result created a distrust among the Union General Staff that harmed the war effort.